we're talking about the MCU. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of changes, a lot of stuff going on. So it's kind of we're calling this segment. How would you fix the MCU? So Dan, how would you fix the MCU? I mean, there's so many things that can be done to fix the MCU. Some people would say there's nothing wrong with the MCU. Like, what's like, why fix something that's not broken? There's I would clearly something wrong with the MCU, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, to those people, like, you might be speaking to some people there, but like, in my opinion, I think the MCU very much needs a lot of work. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's definitely feels like the MCU is past its prime. When I say the prime, I mean like you know I think Phase Two was probably the peak of its prime, oh, when like yeah. they could not miss like from Guardians of the Galaxy to uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, um, even like the Second Avengers: Age of Ultron. I think that's a movie that gets better I mean, on rewatch. We're talking like the third Iron Man. Yes, Phase Two was like where yeah. it was. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Or even like even if you extend to Phase Three with like Thor Ragnarok or yeah. Ka- you know Avengers: Infinity War or the first Black Panther movie, those were movies that were like cultural defining movies that literally the world over was talking about. They were the kind of uh, cultural phenomenons that Barbie and Top Gun Maverick have been in recent years, yeah. and I just don't think the MCU has really hit those highs since Avengers: Endgame. And there's reasons why, but like to talk about how we would fix it, I think there's I I think it comes down to three different things. Mm-hmm. A, this is something Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, has said himself on several occasions, that they have been putting out way too many projects a year, and that's diluted the brand of the MCU, is diluted the quality of storytelling that Marvel was known for. So I think ultimately, if they can pull back on the number of shows and the number of movies they're releasing every year, that's going to help out a lot because... Otherwise, what what ends up happening is you're not only just working with the very best of the best talent, both in front of and behind the camera, but now because you have twice as many things to do, people who you would have said, oh, they're good, but not quite good enough, now are good enough to be working on those projects with you. So I definitely think there's, there's that aspect of it. And then a lot of times, look, it's just, it's just a matter of the fact that Kevin Feige was the person who kind of made the magic happen in those first three phases. And he was working day and night, like seven days a week, trying to make sure all these projects were on track. Now there's simply too much going on for him to really be able to have that kind of oversight over yeah. everything. So I think that's part of the reason why the quality has gone down. So I definitely think well, if they can reduce also, the quality, and- quantity, the quality will go up. You and I have talked about that before, where it just feels like Marvel has forgotten, like, the heart of what made Marvel so great, which really is the quality of storytelling. And that's quite, kind of what I was, like, referring to with Blue Beetle. Like, the quality of storytelling was not up to par, and it needs more. Marvel has sort of, like, moved backwards in the way that they produce things. They're producing too many things. They're just, like, overall, overarchingly there's too much content and there's no way to make that much content all seamless. There's no way. There's no way. And also the more money they put into so many different parts, the less money that they can put into like smaller parts. And so overall it's affecting the whole of the MCU. So you, you and I have talked about that before. I definitely, I definitely agree with you there. I don't think a lot of people would disagree with you there. Um, But it's also a matter of, how do they pull back at this point? You wanted to talk about, we were talking earlier about how they have introduced all of these new characters into the MCU with some of the movies like, oh uh, God, I mean, there's so many movies at this point. The, the Marvel, yeah, well, like... Captain Marvel, not Captain Marvel, well, Captain Marvel was already around, but like Miss Marvel, yeah. She-Hulk. Exactly, um, but there Moon haven't Knight. been any real sequels to these. Right. And so how do they move forward with like really sort of restructuring and narrowing it down and focusing on new characters? Because I think we all are ready to like invest in characters the way we invested in Iron Man and Captain America. I am like yearning for another Robert Downey Jr. superhero. Like, where is he? I need that connection again. Yeah, it's like, I think you have a good point there because early on the MC was about character-based storytelling. Like, you know, when from the first Iron Man movie, the Captain America movies, the Thor movies. And then when they came together and even the Incredible Hulk, like even when they came together and the Avengers, which, you know, like $1.5 billion jet changed Hollywood forever. The yeah. fact that they could do a crossover by doing all these other movies and then bringing the characters together. But the reason why that worked was because the characters were, you know, in their own movies where the audiences got to fall in love with those characters 
separately before they came together. Yeah. Now, when Avengers Endgame happens and a lot of these characters are no longer there, they said, oh, we're going to expand the universe. But like to them, it feels, it feels like when they said expand the universe, they're going to double the amount of characters, but none of them are going to get quite the level of development that, that the heroes before got. Like in the first three phases, you could say, okay, there's probably five or six central characters and and then everything else sort of fits in around them and then each set of characters gets their own like sequels like we yeah. got two guardians movies before the, the the avengers infinity war we had three thor movies we had three iron man movies three captain america movies yeah. recently we have gotten shang chi but the sequel to shang chi may not happen until after the next avengers movie i mean or the next two avengers movies we got moon knight but like that seems who I are the know, avengers who seems, like who are they who now? are the avengers right who like even they, dr like, strange who are they? <laughs> It just, because I just now like, the Scarlet Witch is like evil, so that's one of them. And then, and she missing... may not be alive. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> who knows? Is she is she alive? Is she? I don't know. They, don't it was know. kind of ambiguous how she goes down. I was like, like I Captain know. America has passed his passed his that's shield. Yeah. Uh, Iron Man is D E A D. Like, where yeah. are they? <laughs> I mean, even so, Scarlett Johansson, the Black Widow, she's dead. They kind of try and, well, and they have a new, yeah. You have like, Yelena uh, as the new Black Widow. Oh my God. To me, the problem right now with the MCU is they don't have really a lot of characters that you can kind of stand behind as yeah. those leads of the universe, right? Like, and that comes back to the idea that they haven't really been investing in these characters as much as you would like. I think like with Shang-Chi, there's a character you can really turn into one of the central focuses, yeah. but we really haven't seen the character more than just the one movie that he's been in. Yeah. And then the other problem you put, you know, mentioned was they don't really have any faces of the MCU anymore. In the beginning, we had Iron Man and then we had Steve Rogers and like so you have like these two characters who were sort of the focus of the entire MCU and in Civil War the, the two perspectives collide and yeah. then you know it kind of fractures the Avengers but then they kind of build on that in Infinity War and then in Endgame ultimately there's a payoff there's you know they kind of say okay well let's reconcile let's move forward and then both of the characters sort of go off on their own you know well Iron Man yeah. <laughs> is no longer with us. And then Steve Rogers is sort of no longer with us. Um, but like yeah. since then, yeah, I they, feel like... They sort of insinuate that he's like... Like, dead, do you think right? that Black... Because I feel like Black Panther was going to be one of those characters. Oh, that I think they entirely things. banked on that. And I mean, yeah. obviously, when he passed away, it was horrible yeah, and Bozeman, just yeah, it's... so sad across the board. And Black Panther 2 obviously really had to mirror his passing which was so yeah. like shocking to everyone but i do think that they were banking on chadwick Boseman being the face of marvel and then after that they obviously you have to pay homage to like the situation it was horrible i think chadwick Boseman had a such a lengthy career in front of him that was I mean, like heartbreakingly cut so short. And, you know, there are so many people in the industry that can speak to that. Like Denzel Washington made a comment about he, Chadwick Boseman was going to be the face of Hollywood. It didn't happen and it breaks everybody's heart. And they had to give that a second, right? But I feel like Marvel never really regrouped to figure it out after that. Like they did right. Black Panther 2 and they were like, well, the Avengers are done. Black well, Panther but 2 is done. What do we do? But even outside of that, if you look at the other movies, I feel like, okay, so maybe Doctor Strange is a character that they're looking at as one of those leads, but but then like he's got one movie and we really don't know when the next Doctor but Strange project is I don't is even think be. that's fair because it's, as a character, they built Doctor Strange to be pretty independent on his own. Independent. Right, like he wasn't even technically part of dude. the Avengers. He wasn't even part of the Avengers and like technically speaking in the last exactly he wasn't like he didn't so, even really want to be a part of the event yeah. in endgame like he was just there to like help rewrite history it's he doesn't feel like the good face like that there needs to yeah, be it's, more than one person they rely on for the avengers and who will they be only i think there's one ray of hope here is you know sam vision? nelson's vision vision, vision. Vi no visions I miss no. Vision. um well, I don't know where Vision is. Like no, we got, we had White Vision, 
Then they said they were going to do a TV show with him based on the new version of Vision. But then since WandaVision, we have not seen the character and there's no news of... I mean, I saw a rumor today that there's a new Thor in development already, Thor 5. And they haven't signed Taika Waititi yet. And a lot of people would say that's probably a good thing because of how silly the last Thor movie was. Yeah. Even though Ragnarok was probably the best Thor movie, I think like Love and Thunder went too far into the silly. I haven't seen it yet. It's, if you watch it, you will see what I mean when I say like they went too far into the silly and that kind of you know hurt the movie. Whereas Ragnarok, I think, balanced it out really well. Mm-hmm. But I think moving forward, like they do need to... I'm, well, Sam Wilson's um, Captain America, I think, is probably, you know, with... Uh, what's his name? Is it Anthony... Well, I'm forgetting his name. Um, I'm so plays, bad with names, you guys. But I think his character is being set up to be one of the leaders of this new MCU world, with, like the way Brave that. New World. Yeah. Anthony, Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie. Yeah. yeah. So he's in, in Captain America Brave New World where, of course, Harrison Ford's going to step into the role of Thunderbolt Ross. I feel like that's meant to be a movie that's going to establish the new hierarchy of heroes in the world of the MCU. Um, because right now it seems like there's a lot of pieces and they're just scattered and yeah. we don't know what's going to bring them together. Like one of the things that did in the first three phases was every other movie had some kind of infinity stone related story. Yeah. And then at the end, they were like putting it all together. I'm like, Oh, it makes sense. This is not a coincidence. And like they had in universe explanations. And then like from the audience's perspective, everything kind of came together really well. Yeah. Right now there just isn't that coherence. And like, whether you watch Ant-Man Quantumania uh, or whether you watch Loki season one or even the upcoming season two, it seems like whenever there's Kang involved somewhere, the hero, the, the, the villain, and the, he keeps getting defeated in those individual projects. It's not really building up towards any kind of big grand finale. The only reason we know there's a big grand finale coming up is because we're going to get Kang Dynasty as a next Avengers movie and then Secret Wars. So I just think we need to get a little more coherence into all of this. Like, And then, yeah, just going back to the first point that we made, like they need to reduce the number of projects and focus on the quality. They also need to start investing more into the characters they've introduced already, rather than constantly introducing new characters for a reason as, as, as seemingly, I think it would be stupid if the only reason why they're doing this is because they need like hundreds of characters for the, the Secret War story that they're gonna adapt into the new movie. They, they, you should have characters that people can focus on as the face of the franchise. Because if you don't have the face of the franchise, like in Harry Potter, Harry Potter is the face of the franchise. In Avengers, like we used to think Iron Man and Captain America. In DC, it's always Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. It's one of those characters or all of those characters. Also, they need that for the MCU now. Part of, no, 1000%, I agree with you. But also, I actually just looked up, because I remember Stan Lee passed away a few years ago. So he passed away in 2018. Do you think that that's a big part of the reason, too, why stuff kind of halted? Like, I don't know how much input he had to begin with I don't, in the movie. No, I don't think so. Like, because he, was, he wasn't really involved on the creative side at all. He was just, but they did film all, all of the cameos with him, obviously. Yeah. I, did, I don't think he had much of an input. He was more just the brand ambassador at this point. I okay. think, well, that makes like, more if sense anything, too. Kevin Feige is that person who yeah. is, I think, needs to have more of an input now than ever. And the quality, the quality is going down because the quantity is going up. Yeah. And there's only so many hours in a day and a week and a month that one person can devote to projects. Yeah, one thousand. So, that yeah, I do think that's part of the issue. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, a lot of ways they can fix the MCU. I think they're already working on it because Bob Iger said himself that we need to kind of cut down on the number of projects to improve the quality and put more time and effort into each project that we are working on. And, uh, and it, you know, hopefully with, if Brave New World is a great new Captain America movie, that kind of helps clear up where things stand. When is that slated to come out? Of the, I think it's 2024. They recently pushed it back a little bit, so it's yeah. going to be on the back end of 2024. They were in production until the, the actress strike. Um, or I think they were mostly done. So I, I, know, I don't know how far along they are, or yeah. they still have... They may still do reshoots, you know, like that stuff. All MC movies do reshoots. But I'm hoping that by the this time next year, or certainly by the end of 2024, we yeah. get more clarity, because then we're only going to be a year or two away from the next Avengers movies. And if by the time we get to the next set of Avengers movies we don't have a lot of these questions answered and a lot of these problems addressed, then I think the MCU might really be in trouble because right now they're one or two good projects away from kind of being back to where they were. But if this keeps on going for another year or two, then I think that can cause a lot of long-term damage to the Marvel brand, which they have spent so many years building up to, you know, being probably the most, yeah. not just probably, it is the most successful oh, franchise. One, in the yeah, I mean, it still holds some of the title 
like box office records, doesn't it? I was like, it's it's up there. Avengers Endgame was like one of the top grossing movies. It's the second time. highest grossing of all time though. Yeah. Uh, it was the highest for a little bit then Avatar got re- released and yeah. got the record back. But it's still like, if you look at the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time, I think more than 50% of them are uh, Marvel, Marvel. Event movies. Yeah, including yeah. most of the Avengers films. 